In today's video, we have a variety of NHL news and notes to discuss, including Shea Theodore and the Vegas Golden Knights finally coming to terms on a new contract, plus we have many other updates from around the NHL training camps. All that and more coming up next. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. We review and discuss all 31 NHL teams, so if you're a huge hockey fan, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So as I mentioned, we have a variety of NHL news and notes here today, the most significant though being that Shea Theodore and the Vegas Golden Knights have finally come to terms on a new contract, and it's a long-term, fairly big money contract. The Golden Knights have signed defenseman Shea Theodore to a seven-year deal with an annual cap hit of $5.2 million. Based on previous reports that we discussed here on the channel, we were led to believe that Theodore and the Golden Knights would both prefer a longer-term deal, and that's what they were working on here. So they finally come to the agreement, and Theodore gets $5.2 million over the next seven years. I've already seen a variety of reports on this contract and comparing them to different players around the NHL that have recently signed. But for me, the contract that is most comparable is Calgary Flames defenseman Noah Hannafin. If you take a look at that deal, that was a six-year deal at $4.95 million. I find Hannafin and Theodore's contracts to be very comparable. If you look at their careers so far, uh, they have about the same amount of NHL experience. Now, they both have three seasons under their belt. Hannafin has played three full seasons and has more games played. But if you project out their point totals in the regular seasons, they are pretty comparable. The main difference here is that Shea Theodore has played in the NHL playoffs all three seasons. His first two with the Ducks and last year with the Vegas Golden Knights while Noah Hannafin's been playing in Carolina and does not have any playoff experience under his belt. So not only does Theodore have the playoff experience, but he's performed rather well. If you look at last year's run to the Stanley Cup Final, he was a huge role for the Vegas Golden Knights and was certainly one of their best defensemen throughout the NHL playoffs. So that kind of justifies a little bit more term and just slightly more money. So I think that's the most comparable deal to take a look at here. If you look at some other defensemen like Darnell Nurse and Josh Morrissey, yes, they get shorter term bridge deals. And those contracts do make sense for the teams and the players in their current situation. With the Vegas Golden Knights having more cap space and more flexibility in that regard right now, it does kind of make sense to lock him up longer term. Obviously, if they do a shorter term deal and he continues to progress, then obviously in a couple of years time when he'd need a new contract, he'd probably get even more money. So longer term, this probably makes Theodore a more affordable option to stay in Vegas for the full seven years here. So overall, based on the comparables, I think this contract is pretty fair for Vegas as well as Shea Theodore. Uh, he should be a big part of their defense score, especially where they're starting the season without defenseman Nate Schmidt for the first 20 games. It was imperative they, they got Theodore under contract and get him into their lineup as soon as possible. At this point in time, he'll still have some time to train with the team and practice, uh, maybe even get in a preseason game or so before the regular season gets underway here. So obviously that's good news that he'll more likely be available for opening night. Some other signings to discuss here today as well. Not quite as significant as Theodore with Vegas, but former Vegas Golden Knights defenseman Lucas Spiza has signed a one-year deal of $1.5 million with the New York Islanders. Now, as I reported here a few weeks back, Spiza did go to training camp with the Islanders on a professional tryout and has landed himself a contract. Of all the guys going on PTOs, so far he's the first one to officially land himself an NHL contract for the coming season. I'm a little bit surprised it's one and a half million. I thought he might get the more of the veteran deal one year, one million, if he were to stay and sign with the Islanders. Um, but obviously they must feel comfortable paying him a little bit more. To be completely honest, I thought they might actually go with a younger group here with the Islanders, but it looks as though Lula Murillo and company is going with a more veteran group. They recently just assigned a lot of their youngsters to the American Hockey League, like Josh Hosang, Michael Del Cole, as well as Kiefer Bellows, uh, even defenseman Sebastian Ajo, who saw some time last year and looked pretty solid. Um, so obviously, this is a little bit of a surprise move, in my opinion, here for the Islanders, going with a very veteran group. Obviously, this will give Spiza a chance to kind of resurrect his career here and see if he can make a good, solid season out of it and either stay with the Islanders or gain employment elsewhere beyond this season. So I'd love to hear your comments down below. Let me know what you think of the Theodore contract signing with Vegas. Is it, What do you think of the term? What do you think of the dollars? Do you agree? Do you think it's fair? I want to know your thoughts on that one, as well as Lucas Pisa here. Obviously, it's a little bit surprising. He got $1.5 million and got a job with the Islanders, in my opinion. But I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Now, one other signing to report on, but this one's an entry-level contract. The Washington Capitals have signed their first selection in the 2018 draft, defenseman Alexander Alexiev. Uh, to his ELC contract and he will stay in junior this year he's already been reported back to the WHL to go to his team with the Red Deer Rebels long term it's potential the Capitals could end up looking at him as a draft steal uh, there were some points in the year where he was expected to be drafted higher than where the Capitals were able to take him at 
Um, like I said, due to injuries and lack of playing time, he did kind of slip a little bit in the first round. But I do think he's a very talented guy and can certainly be able to contribute to the Capitals lineup here probably in a couple of years' time. Now, other NHL training camp news, we've had a couple of guys released from the professional tryouts. Obviously, Spiza was successful in getting a contract, but a couple of these other guys, unfortunately, were not. The Edmonton Oilers have officially released Scotty Upshaw from his PTO, although we've kind of known basically for some time that that likely wasn't going to result in him getting a contract. I do believe when training camp first opened, he had difficulty with the physical. I'm not sure if he was completely cleared to play or not. They finally made it official, but no real surprising news there. And the Florida Panthers have decided to release Mark Latestu from his PTO as well. Obviously, the Florida Panthers already have a ton of contracts and the forward group already lined up for the 18-19 season here so it was a little bit of a surprise when they offered Latestu a chance to go to camp on a PTO uh, I was a little bit concerned that might block out one of their youngsters but they've already sent Owen Tippett back to the Ontario Hockey League looks as though Henrik Borgstrom will stick with the team uh, and be the main rookie in the forward group this year obviously they picked up Mike Hoffman in the offseason as well so there's obviously a lot of guys who can play in the forward group here with the Panthers organization and Latestu was just not able to earn himself a contract the Montreal Canadiens also just announced that Joel Ward, who was attending training camp on a PTO, has also been released from his tryout. So even though he did look pretty decent during the preseason here in the action he's seen, uh, they have opted not to sign him. Uh, maybe he'll get the attention of another team. Hard to say, but obviously this is probably one last crack at it here for Joel Ward before he calls it a career. They've also announced that forward Nick Suzuki, who they obtained in the Max Pacioretty trade with the Vegas Golden Knights, has been returned to junior. So that probably doesn't come as a huge surprise, but obviously there was some speculation and question marks around Nick Suzuki and just Perry Kokaniemi if they would actually play with the Habs this year or take another year to develop with their junior club. So Suzuki this goes back to the OHL. Kokaniemi, a decision has not yet been made. NHL veteran Brian Gianta has officially announced his retirement and will be accepting a job to work with the Buffalo Sabres player development team. Brian Giantos had a pretty solid, successful career here, obviously playing with a few teams, started with the New Jersey Devils, played with the Montreal Canadiens, the Buffalo Sabres, and ended with the Boston Bruins. Obviously, Gianta also played for the U.S. Olympic team last year where the NHL did not go, uh, where he was not under NHL contract and an opportunity to represent his country at the Olympics. Overall, I think we can say Gianta had a pretty solid career. Got some of Brian Gianta's career highlights here. Obviously, his career high was a 48-goal season, which was a fantastic year with New Jersey uh, back in 05 06. He also put together seven consecutive years where he scored 20 goals or more, which was an absolutely fantastic run for him. Obviously, he was part of the New Jersey Devils 2003 Stanley Cup run. Obviously, that year, he kind of started off with a smaller role and built his way up throughout the year, uh, being a fairly key contributor in the NHL playoffs. Oh. So Brian Gionta finishes his NHL career with 1,026 games played and 595 points. So overall, I think he's had a pretty solid career. Certainly can be proud of those numbers for sure. And hopefully he'll be a good asset to the Buffalo Sabres player development team. So announced his retirement here in the past week, but I don't believe I reported on it at the time. But goaltender Andre Pavlik, who played a lot with the Winnipeg Jets, most recently with the New York Rangers, has also announced his retirement from the NHL as well. Now the last piece of news here I want to touch on is the Philadelphia Flyers new mascot, Gritty. Now in case you didn't see this piece of news, I'm going to put a picture up on the screen so you can see a picture of him. I hope I don't scare you with this picture. Uh, he's kind of hideous in my opinion. Not the best looking mascot by any means. Uh, I'm not really sure what the Flyers are thinking with this. I mean, obviously at some point they've got marketing people kind of sitting in a room, you know, kind of thinking, hmm, you know, how can we get our fans more into the game? Oh, we need a new mascot that's going to scare the crap out of them. Um, I, I just don't quite understand where they're going with this. Obviously mascots main purpose at games are to kind of get the crowd, you know, revved up, keep the noise level up get create some excitement create some fun in the atmosphere obviously you know you want to be approachable by fans and kids especially and this is really not sure that's going to really accomplish that now i know they went with the name gritty because of the history of the team you know the big bad flyers uh the broad street bully you know kind of history uh, although really today's flyers don't necessarily play that exact style of game i mean they do have some guys that you know like a wayne simmons that's still kind of like your power forward but really overall the today's game is more about speed and skill and the flyers are doing a fairly good job of keeping up with that so the reaction on social media here has been mostly negative for this mascot, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you, what do you think? Do you think this was a bad idea or do you like Gritty? I want to hear your thoughts either way down below in the comment section. Now, if you're new to the channel here, hope you consider subscribing. We cover all 31 NHL teams. There's plenty of content here for all hockey fans to enjoy. So if you're new, hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button as well. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you very much for watching, everybody. We will catch you next time.